So hopefully you guys can see my, my desktop. My name is Francois Donzé. I'm a technical consultant working in the compute business unit of HPE and I'm focusing on low level management of uh, mainly mainly rack mount servers uh, and a little bit of super domes com computers. And today I have a pleasure to present the HP RESTful interface tool. Um, as Fred told you and or Didier told you, you will be able to download the handouts from the My Room application or from uh, either the notebooks, the sources of the notebooks if you are connected, just right click on a specific notebook and choose the download menu here, the download item here. There is the output of everything contained in the zip file here that you can download as well. This zip file is again in the My Home application so you can download it. So what is the um, workshop? Oh, I forgot to, to thank Michel Huet, who is my uh, subject matter expert. He will be answering the question you have in the chat because I, will, I am not, you know, um, smart enough to answer the question in the chat as well as, as speaking here. So what is the um, workshop goal? Well, it's just basically uh, an overview of this uh, Swiss knife tool, I would say. And um, it is not intended to replace the official documentation, but to present it maybe another way with examples um, and live live examples. And um, the infrastructure you're going to use is the following. So students are down below that slide and each student has access to a Jupyter notebook. From that Jupyter uh, server, I would say, um, each student has a read-only access to an IL5 live physical ILO5 as well, well I have only one ILO5 for uh, this workshop so it's not possible to have uh, students with uh, uh, read and write privileges however each student has read and write privileges to an ILO5 simulator in uh, in a remote systems and uh, we will be using that uh, simulator. There is as well an open BMC simulator, but it is not um, up and running for um, today's workshop because we don't need it here. So this is the basic um, basic architecture of the uh, of the Jupiter from HP Dev. We have two labs in this workshop, however, however, we will go only through lab number one. Lab number two is, or it's under construction, um, a library of ILORest examples here. So let's click on the lab, lab one and, and go straight to um, the beginning of the workshop. What is ILORest? ILORest is a command line Redfish client primarily designed to manage HPE, ILO4, and 5 base, um, base servers. It's Python oriented. You can get the sources from GitHub. And yes. Can you make your. Can you repeat, please? Can you make your, is your other full screen yet? It's okay, it's okay, never, never mind. Huh. So yes, it is full screen. Any problem? Oh, sorry, sorry, go on. Okay, okay, so I was saying that um, the sources of idle rest are public and can be, can be downloaded from GitHub and some binary packages uh, are available as well for multiple, multiple distributions including Windows, uh, Debian, RPM. From the HP Customer Support Center you can download the Windows version and an RPM package version as well. So ILORest is a very 
flexible team tool and you can do a lot of things with it. Uh, we'll go through some of them uh, here, starting with interactive and out of band. So, um, so you can see the, um, um, the flexibility of that tool. Then we'll go with in band and scripted mode and then file based mode um, at the end of this uh, overview. So let's go first with interactive out-of-band demo. Remember that out-of-band means that you are sitting on the management system on the network. And using IROS, you provide an ILO IP and username and password to reach an ILO 5 located somewhere on the network through uh, using HTTPS typically. So this is out of band um, uh, way of using idle rest. Um, if you want to do the example here, so we, I have a list of idle rest commands, interactive modes here, but for that I need to run them in a shell. So the easiest way to remember the commands to run and, and to uh, switch back and forth from, from the shell is to duplicate the notebook here. So you right click on the tabulation of the notebook and you click, you, you choose new view for notebook. This allows, this allows the duplication of a notebook. And then you have this launcher uh, uh, tab here. If you don't have it, just hit the plus button on the left hand side of the screen and you can move this launcher on the right hand side here and click on it and choose terminal here. So I have a terminal and from there I can run ILO REST in interactive mode. Um, the message you can see says that it's possible to use IROREST locally or, in, or remotely. So this is exactly what we are doing. IROREST in interactive mode has the Francois? command. Yes? Would you mind just uh, uh, minimizing the share control window that appears on your screen? Just it doesn't eat. Uh, uh, oh, oh, you can see it. Yes. Oh, okay. And, I and, and close the Sorry. ends up. The hands up. Yeah, well. but the, the hands up comes. I will put it on uh, on, the, on the other screen if it comes back again. Yeah, thanks a lot. Sorry for that. No, no, it's okay. So if I type H E and then tab, there is this um, uh, command completion, <clears throat> filling up the rest of the of the command. I am not going through all the item of the help because it's pretty uh, important some of them only. For example, concerning the optional arguments here, um, <clears throat> we will use the cache directory, supplying a path. We'll use the debug mode, uh, log directory as well to inspect some debug uh, things. No logo, just to keep um, the display clean, I would say and, and uh, that's it for those here. We'll use as well some macro command. So here I have BIOS macro command. We'll go through the boot order here and, uh, and, and some others as well. There is as well, we have as well some micro command like list get and we'll explain all of them. Select, status, types. Types is maybe the more important one from a concept point of view and I will explain uh, what it is uh, um, exactly and we'll go through some others as well. There are some other m macro commands dealing with persistent memory, um, smart arrays, right? and um, ILO, repo ILO repository here. So um, this is a very brief presentation of the help. And if I want to log into a remote ILO, just type login, the IP address or name of the remote ILO 5, minus U for username, which, is be, which will be student. 
that if you don't specify a password on the command line, the tool will ask you, and I suspect you don't see anything here because there are some hidden things. The password is password with some fancy characters. Did I get it right? Yes. So I can see that I rest, logged me in, and discovered some data on the remote ILO. Typically, IROREST um, pulled out some data and put it in a cache, and we will speak about the cache la later on. So now I am logged in. Uh, I told you that the types command is, um, is very important because you have to understand that each and every data in the Redfish tree belongs to a data type. If you want to forget everything about this workshop, you must remember at least one, which is that each and every data in the Redfish tree belong to a specific type. To get the list of the types, the data types, just type types. And you will see some types, data types with prefix HPE, those are specific to HPE. We call them OEM um, HPE extended types. And the others don't have the HPE prefix. So they are standard Redfish from DMTF uh, types. So again and again, each and every resource in the Redfish tree, in a Redfish tree, belongs to a specific type, and this is the, 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 the main important and the, the, the most important concept for, uh, for Redfish here. So, if I want uh, to see some parameters, some properties, the, f the first thing I have to do is select a type and then perform some commands. So I will do select, SEL with tab, select, for example, BI for BIOS tab, and automatically the BIOS type is selected. Okay, I can do select with no argument just to see that the selected type is BIOS. And from here, I can say get and all the resources under the BIOS type will appear. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of them, but these are, these are all the, the BIOS parameters in, um, in, in the system. Um, I can get the output in JSON format and select on the same command line another type. You can see that here I selected manager with a dot at the end of manager. Well, you can specify the dot or omit the dot, but uh, put it. Um, so you, you, will, you will get the, the, the latest version of the, of the type if the Redfish server has several versions of the same time here. So now my output is in JSON format. And it's you can you you can use some other tools to uh, to inspect this here. Um, I'm almost finished with the, the interactive way of using um, idle rest and just perform a logout, which is very important. Always perform a logout where well when you are when you are finished. Otherwise, you may bump into um, uh, the upper limit of number of sessions in uh, in the remote in the remote ILO thing. So this was the interactive way of using ILO REST uh, um, in out of band management. In band management. Here, you will not be able to perform the demonstration because you need root access uh, to a remote system. So I am the only one being able to do it here. So if I say, uh, so in-band management for a as a definition, just briefly, you are sitting in an operating system and you want to access the underneath ILO 5 without going externally on the network. This is possible because IDOS comes, yes? 
There is a question in the chat from Sofa. He has a problem with a kind of a timeout. Current session has expired or is invalid. Please load again. Yeah, I can log right. in okay. It's just that it, you know, once I do one command, then I have to log in again. Uh, from, from the shell? Uh, well, yeah, from the shell. So I logged in okay. I was able to run the command, and then I went to go do the next command, and then it gives me this current session is expired or is invalid. If I log in again, I can do the next uh, command. But it's like, why does it keep yeah, coming so out? I suspect, so okay, okay, so... so yeah, so I suspect that we have reached. Uh, actually, we have 97 people in this session, and, and uh, uh, the number, the, the, uh, yes, the number, the maximum number is 20 sessions into a physical ILO file. So you reach the, we reach the number of sessions here. So I'm sorry, um, just ask your colleagues to log out. <laughs> this will not happen afterward because we will use the ILO 5 simulator, but uh, for uh, this one, for this exercise, uh, yeah, uh, sorry for that. Maybe we can ask ILO people to increase the number of sessions in ILO 5 so everybody can log in. Understood? And Oscar, Oscar, yeah, can thank you, you also can you close the, the file explorer on the left so we get more screen tape for on the left hand side, yeah, this one just uh, here you are. Perfect, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I was explaining in band management, saying that ILO REST in its uh, distribution comes with a little driver called the chief driver, chief for channel interface driver, that allows you to go from the operating system straight into uh, the ILO here. If you are logged as root, it's possible uh, to access the ILO 5 without any specifying any um, username and password credential. So ILO 5 uh, server here and just clean the screen and if i so i'm, I'm going to use the scripted mode here ilo rest logging without any credential and you can see that discovering that i is done so uh, i am logged in from there i can um, um, perform some get and set commands like for example get admin name from uh, unfortunately here i don't have the command completion feature so i need to set, to type everything so i want the admin name property from bios admin name is francois Dorze. so what i want to do is modify this using rest set so this is very simple syntax admin name equal. I need quotes because there is a, a space uh, in between the first name and the last name of the administrator here. This guy is very f famous in France and his name is John Duff. Ilo REST um, works and, and right now the modification I did is inside the cache here. And I can see the status of the modification using the status command, micro command, right? So I always found one attribute that has been modified, which is admin name. If I want to push this modification toward the ILO, I need to perform a commit. So very easy to understand like database, working on a database. So ILO REST commit will push the modification to the ILO 5. ILO 5 answers that this modification will take effect until system is reset. This is true for most of the BIOS parameters, but not for this one. But anyway, 
you can you can do a refresh of the um, uh, the session and and then you can see that the modification have been performed without any reset so i am finished with um, with the this uh, demo here in band demo and I, i'm just logging out to free up some some session i was lucky actually to to be able to connect here Anyway, I'm finished as well with Shell, so I am cleaning up everything here, so you have a bigger screen at your at your play. And I will continue with examples of sweep mode here. And the first um, cell I have here is the preparation of the entire rest of the of the work of, of the, um, the workshop. Each of you have a student number, so I put your student ID in a variable. Then I create some TCP port so you you can uh, so I can access my my dedicated ILO5 simulator, uh, cache directory, log directory, log file location, uh, and so on. Uh, credential, student password here. With funny. Um, funny password name. Um, I'm creating an alias as well where I exclude the logo of the tool, no logo. I specify a cache directory and a log directory um, to be able to access it easily for the, for the demos. And the last step is that I verify that all the systems I need to access are reachable you will get an error for OpenBMC because I did not start your OpenBMC simulators. How, however, uh, you should have ILO5 simulator as well as ILO5 reachable. If not, this is a big problem. Um, so, um, right now, what I will do... Hmm, interesting, I hope we will not have a lot of problems here. Because uh, uh, I suspect some student will not be able to go through uh, because of session numbers. Here, what I'm doing is I go, I, I am logging into the real physical ILO5. Then I modify the cache of um, this um, ILO5 to access then the, the, the simulator. However, because too many people are in the session, I suspect that some students would not be able to go, to go through. Right. So here, what I'm doing is I'm showing that cache file, the URL is pointing to the physical HTTPS ILO5, as well as the index file here, pointing to the physical ILO5. And then using the ACD command, I modify the URL to point to the BMC simulator on a specific port. Here. And um, hmm. the problem is that if I log out from here, the cache file will be, will be dated. So, uh, this is good learning for um, for this workshop, and uh, I am really sorry, but some students will bump in into a session, uh, too many session problem. Anyway, um, so my first problem here I want to, to, I would like to solve, is to modify the time zone of my ILO5. Um, I said that each and every resource belongs to a specific data type. So the problem is to find which data type holds the time zone, um, the, the time zone resource. If I go into the API reference document, and if I look for time zone or time zone with a space here, I will find two properties, a BIOS one, a BIOS-related one, and uh, a ILO-related one. Of course, uh, I, um, I have to choose the ILO-related one, and the documentation specifies that um, the time zone, the ILO time zone, belongs to the 
HPI load date and type. So I will select this type and get all the resources underneath that data type. So what do I have in JSON format? What do I have in the HPI load date time? A list of NTP servers? Oh, it's empty, so my uh, system is not very well configured. I have, well, the time zone resource with sub uh, properties, index is 15, US UTC offset is uh, zero, uh, value is GMT. Ah, the get command returns well, some, okay, good, good properties, but difficult to read for human being. Um, then I have a time zone list with all the indexes starting at zero. Uh, going through to 15, so I can see that my time zone is in the list, this is good for me, but mm, uh, the list command does not return something readable for human. So the get command, sorry. However, let's try the list command. The list command retrieves the same thing as the get command, plus some more data, like administrative data, starting with uh, add sign, add all data context, and so on. And if I take a look at the time zone property, I have one more uh, field, which is the name. And this is human readable, so I know that my ILO is configured in the London time zone. Um, so, what you have to remember here is that the get and the list commands basically returns almost the same thing. The list command is more verbose. So, this is the, what you, ha you have to, to remember from the get and the list here. Um, you can get some more information concerning a specific resource. So if I ask information for this time zone, I have the name, the, some description, and if it's read-only, true or false, eh, good for me, I will be able to change that ILO time zone and some sub-properties, if any. Personally, I want to change the name. I could change the index, okay, but the problem is sometimes the index changes over time. Right? However, uh, the name is, is more stable, so let's change the name, which is a sub-property of a time zone resource. So I will use the get, uh, sorry, I will use the set command, time zone slash name, and the new name of, um, of the time zone. I, show, I chose New Delhi because there is a space uh, in between, so you can uh, see that it's possible to have multiple words. In, 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 in the name. Uh, then I did an ILORES status. Good. Um, my, cha my change has been incorporated into the cache, and now I can commit and log out here to push really the modifications into the remote ILO. Um, of course, I am pointing to an ILO simulator. So I'm not changing a lot in, the, well, actually, I'm, I'm changing what's inside the memory of the simulator. So, so far, we've seen set, uh, get, list, and set command. Let's um, have um, a more complex example where I would like to retrieve the IPv4 address of a dedicated ILO network port. You know that uh, you can have the ILO service either on dedicated port, physical port, or a shared network port, sharing the port with, with the operating system. I want, um, I want that for only um, uh, the ded dedicated port, not for the shared shared port, and not for the, the OS port. I don't want uh, uh, the IPv4 address of the others. So, what I have to do is find into, inside the API reference document the type of this ILO dedicated ne uh, network port. If I go to this API, API reference guide and look for keyword dedicated or shared, 
I will find the type I am looking for. Right? Um, here, I will um, log in again and list all the types and filter on Ethernet just to see if there are several types with with a string Ethernet in them. Yes, I have two types. I have Ethernet interface and Ethernet interface collection. Um, let's select first this Ethernet interface collection to see the elements and the resources part of it. And we will uh, list the objects in JSON format. Okay, uh, of course, I am, I, uh, fall into, can somebody could log out for a while? So I can log in and get, I'm not going to be long. Okay, let's select again. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so selecting this collection type retrieves two blocks of information. The first one is the collection of all the system, the operating system interfaces. I have four of them, one, two, three, four. Uh, difficult to recognize them because the names uh, are not uh, very friendly here. The second block of the collection is manager network interfaces. Manager uh, is a synonym for ILO5 in, in HPE. And uh, I have three of them, so, um, I have number one, number two, number three. Ah, yeah, okay. So one is the dedicated one, the other is the shared, and the third one um, is the virtual NIC host. We call it host interface uh, as well. So I need to look a little bit deeper and select the Ethernet type now and list the objects to try to recognize uh, what, 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 what I want here. Okay, again, my session is uh, has expired, so I need to log in again here. Thank you, and list here if I am lucky. Okay, thank you. I think that after that I will point always to the um, to the simulator, so uh, it should be fine here. What I, did I do? I selected the Ethernet interface type, list all the objects, and, and extracted only the name property in JSON format. So I have ENO2, ENO1, these are operating system interfaces. Oh, there is the, this is the manager dedicated network interface. So I have selected only the name property, so I don't know the name of this one. Anyway, what is, what's important is that this field name, so I can use it to filter out the others. Right. This one, this command, will get the IPv4 addresses and filter against man the string manager dedicated network interface. So let's do it here. And I get um, the content of the field IPv4 addresses containing the IPv4 address here. So I can extract by going down and selecting IPv4 addresses slash address with my filter, and I will get uh, uh, exactly what I was looking for here. Thank you very much for uh, the session here. Um, it's possible to find another way to, to dig under and to filter out the, the, the result using the OEMHP interface type here. So let me log out from here so I can give a session back to, to some people. So, so far we've seen simple get and set. We've seen a get and set action using a filter keyword. Uh, now we'll um, inspect and use the, deb the ILO REST debug mode. This mode can be very interesting when you are writing your own script.
and you have a problem batching or posting or putting um, a work um, a workload a body into a remote ILO and you don't you don't understand it, do, it just that doesn't work what you can do is use ILO rest put it in debug mode and then um, you can take a look at the log file to understand how ILO rest could do the job so let me log in again and modify the cache so I can point to the simulator. Um, I will use for for example the boot order command. So if I retrieve the help file for the boot order command, uh, filtering on the one time keyword, um, boot order dash dash one time boot equal hdd basically says please uh, reboot when i reboot the system um, uh, the system should reboot on a on a hard disk drive right and i want to do that only once uh, only one time so this is uh, what i want to do let's get the the list of all the possible options for this one time boot um, parameter so here I'm getting this list from the simulator so I have AGD here and I will select BIOS setup be careful because utilities sometimes you can you will mix utilities and BIOS setup BIOS setup is RBSU so to modify the BIOS utilities typically points to the intelligent provisioning of, of the ILO so what I'm doing here is selecting the BIOS setup and I want to do that only for next reboot of my system and then I do an IRS status just to understand which parameters have been uh, have been changed so actually two parameters have been ch changed the boot source override target which is hidden under the boot property and the boot source override enabled property so this is everything is complex and uh, ILORS can be your friend to debug and to write your own programs remember that now the modification is in the cache I want to push it to the ILO and for that I need to do a commit but I'm doing the commit in debug mode the output goes to slash that slash new because I don't want to mess up my display and then I just I would just uh, maybe well, yeah log out again okay and we'll go into the log file to see how we can interpret uh, this log file. so we I am pushing and performing the commit I need for that to open the left sidebar and I can see that my log file came here I just double click on it and I can see each and every request performed by by the tool IROS first one is a request get toward this part and so on and so on personally I am interested in the patch uh, request so I am doing control F request colon space patch and here we are idle rest to push the modification to patch the modification performed the patch query toward redfish v1 system one with the following headers we, you can see that there is the authentication token here don't forget it if you write your own programs and the body of a request is this one so you just have to uh, understand what ILORS did to push um, to patch the remote ILO and and troubleshoot your um, your own own program here. The response of the survey is interesting here. And um, uh, okay, so the patch got a 200 request here, uh, which is which is now oh sorry for that actually the real um, answer was a 204 no content remember that I am pushing 
toward the Hilo 5 simulator, so so uh, the content is not the same as a, as a real Hilo 5. Anyway, uh, I suspect you you understood the way to use the debug mode of um, Hilo REST to troubleshoot your um, your your programs here. Let me stop the left and side here. So debug file. So the, the next mode I'd like to talk about is, is the file-based mode. Imagine you would like to duplicate an entire server or duplicate duplicate only the ILO configuration or the BIOS configuration from one system uh, into another one or a list of, uh, of multi, multiple other systems. Um, it's, this is possible with Hilo REST using the save and load commands. So the save and load command allows you to select which data types you want to, to save and then push after modification, manual modification, I would say, toward other targets. Let me log in again and modify the, the cache, so I point to the, the simulator. Okay, good. Um, in this query, I am saving using the minus minus multi-save attribute, the chassis and the manager network protocol data types. So I am um, I want to to to, to um, yeah save those and then after modification I will push them back here. So very easy to do. Um, run it. By default, the 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 file the, the output of this command goes into a file called irs.json, but you can modify that. Uh, let's have a look, very brief look at this file here, so we can understand how it works. So this one, idores.json, appeared here. I can view it. The first block is a comment block with um, some information concerning the system I took the, the data from. So it, it, it's a U32 type of hardware from HP. It's a DL3 uh, 80, um, 360 with this version um, with this version of, of ILO. Don't modify anything here because if you try to push it to a system which is not compatible with that one you may mess up your target system, right? And then um, I have the blocks of the, the chassis here that I asked for, uh, the chassis collection block as well, and then the manager network protocol data type here. I'm not going to inspect everything here, but you can dig under and you have everything here. Okay, so now that I retrieved some um, data types. What I'm doing here is I modify a couple of them, the indicator LED and the alert mail. Um, oh, okay, alert mail, uh, may, uh, so I gave the same name as previous uh, example with uh, alert mail, so we'll see how it goes here. So just modify the same files and then what I'm I'm doing here I'm pushing again to the same system but okay this is not reality in reality you would push the modified um, the modified file towards some different different system um, in a loop for example here so loading modified properties loading configuration, committing changes, and you have um, uh, some return messages for each and every block of data type here, right? And, uh, okay, so John Duff is now the alert mail contact, and uh, the LED is blinking now uh, on, on, the, on the remote system, okay? And I am not logged out here. So we saw right now how to save a partial configuration, 
uh, where, where you give um, the data types you want to to get and then push towards some different systems. The next server clone demo um, clones an entire server. So let me log in again and point to the simulator. Okay, good. The server clone command with subcommand save will get everything from the system except the BIOS subsystem, but including the smart storage subsystem uh, data type. Actually, uh, those two data types are a little bit special, specific, so if you want to include or exclude them, you need to, to specify that on the, on the command line, right? So um, let's go for it. Oh, I didn't explain the auto. The auto attribute means that automatically the system will put a placeholder in the saved file for, for example, ILO license. If you have an ILO license uh, that you want to push afterwards to some specific uh, to, to some specific systems, you will need to edit uh, that placeholder. And if you have a BIOS password, for example, that you want to push uh, or modify, the, um, if you don't put the the auto, you will not have a placeholder in, in the saved file, but the, the command will ask you interactively to provide the information. Anyway, so I sucked up everything from, from the, the, the system. See, for example, remember to verify your license key here, so you have some comments here. So what I should do now is edit the JSON, um, the JSON clone file, which is here with everything, remember the comments is very important here, and all the data types that have been saved here. So I, I should go there and modify according to the, the next target, to the targets that I, I want to push um, in the configuration. So let's say, let's assume I did the modification. Now I am using the load command to push the, the modifications uh, uh, with input this file here, I will rest clone the JSON. So let's do it. And the first thing the system does is verify the coherency between the source file and the target system. So uh, BIOS versions are compatible, so um, we'll be able to do uh, some push here. Okay. And um, the response, it takes some time. Yeah, we have some little errors here because I did not really edit the, the, the JSON file. But anyway, it will go through. And the last thing I need to do is, oh, I get an invalid response body here just because I am not pushing toward the real physical ILO file, but to the simulator. So it's normal that I'll, I'm getting some, some errors here. Patching, uh, I need to log out after this is finished, but it will go. And be very, very fast. Okay, so this is it. I can log out safely here, almost. Oops. Yeah, okay, I can go, I can log out now. Good. What did I do? Oh, no. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Anyway, log out here. Yes. Just to be clean. The last chapter here, I have seven minutes to go through, is the raw commands, concern the raw commands. In actually, the raw commands, raw get, raw put, raw patch, allows you to go straight to the resource in a Redfish tree and to get the value or to modify, to modify it. This is not a very good idea because um, over time resources 
move from one location to another one in the redfish tree, so you may miss your target at some point of time. However, sometimes um, it's good to, to go for troubleshooting or some of the reasons. You would like to, to get uh, uh, your information from, from the redfish tree without using the data type. So we, let me log again into the system here and point to the to the simulator. Um, I'm going to use the same example as previously, retrieving the IPv4 address of the ILO dedicated uh, NIC port. So uh, using the raw get and the direct path to the resource. How do I know that it's number one? Well, because I have some experience. But be careful, it, may, it works today, but it may not work today. So this dedicated port may have another name, number two or number three, in, uh, in the future. And then I am using an external program, the um, JSON query Linux program. Uh, you can use PowerShell pipe and, and commandlets to extract the field that you want from the response of this row command, right? So using this complex um, JSON query, I can extract my IPv4 address. So I did the same as previously, uh, but um, be careful using row commands here. Row patch and row put and row post basically have the same idea. So you go straight, you post, you patch, uh, straight to the server using the, um, the, um, the location, the exact location of the resource you want to, to modify. So I am logging into the system again. And for using those uh, patch put or post command, you need to supply a body, um, the information you want to, to modify. And uh, this is one possible syntax for um, row, row commands. And uh, the format of this changed recently. Uh, but anyway, with the most recent idle rest, you will be able to use this syntax. So you provide the target endpoint and then the resource with the values you want to modify. And then you supply, you perform the raw patch with the, the file as input here. We'll see what the status, what, what the status uh, will say here. So let's go for it. Operation completed successfully. And the status says no changes found just because the raw patch goes straight to the target without putting anything in the cache. So we don't have to do any commit here. So, uh, so this is, be careful. Uh, if you made a mistake, you may correct your target system here. Well, basically, this is it for lab number one. Again, in lab number two, you will find a work in progress notebook with some examples. The examples uh, will change and uh, will in increase over time. Uh, typically, what I'm doing is uh, when I have questions from customers or inter internal folks, and when I can solve the problem, I will put them into this library of examples here. And uh, the last notebook is the conclusion. However, we have uh, three or four minutes if we can have some live questions. I don't know. I can see that the chat was really busy. Again, uh, I apologize concerning the number of sessions limited on, on the, the real ILO file. Uh, ILO file. Thank you, Francois. I think all the questions were answered by uh, so, uh, if you have any other questions, uh, speak the microphone. I think. 
and I'll extract the, I, I will extract the the question and put them in the doc and have them in the in the in our file section on the on the Yammer on the Yammer site. Okay, good. So if you have questions coming later on, you will be able for internal folks to go to Yammer. I am reviewing the Redfish channel and for external people they can go to the Slack uh, group and I am also trying to answer the Redfish questions from those locations. So Kumar, yes, you can interact with Francois later if you want, as he said, uh, either on uh, Slack or in the Yammer group. And uh, thank you, Francois. I think that was a, a great session. We had a little bit of a <laughs> sailing issue, but uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, on December 9th, we have a, a great session, I'm sure, uh, Ted Dunning about uh, uh, Data Fabric, why and how it works. Um, so. I encourage you to uh, to join, um, and then we we already have some subjects lined up for for next year. So break after that session, we only have one in December, and we'll start again in in January. Uh, we'll probably keep that slot, and um, and we'll come up with some other topics. Remember that if you have a topic that you master fully and you'd like to uh, share it with people, we we always accept. Uh, contribution. We'll be happy to have you join the community and speak in one of these dev talks. Uh, the same way we accept also uh, contribution in terms of blogs. Uh, if you go check on our uh, blog page, you see we have lots of topics covered, but not everything is covered yet. So if you're like an open source expert in some some subject, share with us. You know, I I wrote some articles on on thing I did with Elasticsearch. Nothing rocket science, but I. I it, idea is to share with people and uh, share widely so uh, don't hesitate to uh, to submit blogs if you have and if you feel like uh, sharing with the rest of your colleagues in a dev talk uh, please talk to us and uh, we'll be happy to have you. and the so systems that, would, yeah sorry. one last remark the systems will be online till tomorrow I suppose tomorrow end of the in morning and uh, probably I'll, I'll erase the, the students from there on but uh, we'll see with uh, with Francois but uh, you can still play tonight and uh, and early tomorrow morning I suppose so if things are going well this workshop will be on demand uh, before Christmas or let's say Christmas time so this will be your uh, Christmas gift uh, for this year from, from the HP Dev. <laughs> okay, uh, no pressure for us. <laughs> we'll try to do to, to do so. Yeah, indeed. And and uh, as Francois is saying, yeah, we're we're trying to update the content on the of the workshops on demand on a on a monthly basis. So every single month we'll be adding some new workshops. So check them out, please, on the on the uh, on our Act Shack. So it's. Uh, it's a cool place to go and start uh, doing the, these notebooks workshops.